how to write a resume or CV. Nowadays, getting into the job market is an intense struggle, there is so much competition that even getting to an interview seems like an uphill battle. Well, there are things that you can do to make that battle more accessible, and one of those is coming up with the right sort of resume. Hello and welcome to our channel, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This video will show you how to write a resume, CV cover letter and get you noticed by recruiters and employers, so let us begin. During the course of the video, you will learn, what research needs to be done before you write your resume. How to choose the right resume template and layout. What should you include in your resume. How to highlight your work experience and the relevant skills and keywords so you can easily notice by the recruiter. The first thing that you have to do with any resume is to select the right sort of format. In the world of resumes, you can choose from the chronological, functional, or combined form, sometimes called a combination resume. The majority of job applicants are better off with a hybrid CV, which highlights both talents and employment experience. A functional or chronological resume, however, may be more appropriate in certain scenarios. It all depends on the sort of job you are applying to, go online or ask a professional for help. You can even reach out to current employees on LinkedIn, and ask them for help, and advice about what sort of format is going to set you apart from the crowd. The next thing that you have to do is to set the best of layout. Remember, that the first thing any recruiter is going to notice about your resume is its layout. You have to make the resume seem organized and to the point. Your goal should be to make the employer interested in what you have to say about yourself. If you are not doing that, then there is no point in sending out resumes. So, always remember to keep your resume restricted to a single page. We would only recommend that you go for a two-page resume, if you think that all you have written is going to add value. Also, make sure that there is ample white space, clear section headings, and easy-to-read font. You should also think about whether you want to use a free resume template with a classic design, or a more contemporary one. You should probably stick with the first option if you intend to work in a more traditional field like law, banking, finance, etc. In contrast, you can get more creative if you're applying to a tech company, which typically values originality and creativity. So, now that we have talked about the layout and format, the next important thing is obviously the content. The first thing that should be included in your resume is your contact information. You won't get very far if the HR manager can't reach you via email, even if you nail everything else on the application. Always verify the accuracy of the information listed under contact information by checking it twice, and preferably three times. It should include things like your name, phone number, address, email address, and a URL to your LinkedIn profile. With contact information out of the way, it is time to put in your professional resume summary. Your resume should begin with a summary statement that briefly describes your qualifications and experience in the professional world. The summary section of your resume should elaborate on your headline by explaining to recruiters and hiring managers, why you are the best candidate for the position. Not all resume summaries are created equal. Instead, you might elaborate on your work history and your skills, or even compose a killer objective statement if you don't have a lot of experience in the field you're applying to. Next up is your work experience. This part is perhaps one of the most important aspects of your CV, and could be a deciding point in you getting a job. The standard format for this is that your job title or position goes on top of the work experience entry. You want the HR manager to be able to glance at your resume and realize that you have the necessary experience for the position. Then, you'll need to give the name of the company and the address of the office, where you currently or once worked. You may also want to provide a quick description of the company if it is not a well-known one. Next, you also need to provide the timeline of your employment, that is, the number of years or months that you have worked in the position you just stated. You don't have to be exact down to the day, but you should be quite close. Dates should be presented in the format. As this is the norm used by most employers and recruiters. This becomes even more relevant when companies use specific software to scan the best CVs. After you have put in your work experience, you must list down any relevant skills, or keywords that are going to be noticed by the recruiter. After all, these guys skim through hundreds of different CVs, and they are looking for the right sort of abilities. Please note that almost all of the Fortune 500 utilize ATSs to organize and find potential employees. To save time, some applicant tracking systems, ATSs, can evaluate your resume and rate it based on how well it matches the job posting. Resume keywords like customer service, accounts receivable, and Adobe Photoshop are common targets for recruiters' keyword searches. Including the most relevant term, the job title, in the headline of your resume is a great first step in making a good first impression. If you're making use of a hybrid resume, 
you can additionally include a skills section. As for keywords, you will first have to read through the job description to find the things that recruiters are looking for, and then put these skills in as keywords. Finally, add your education and certifications. Include your education on your resume if the position you're applying for demands a degree. After a few years in the workforce, the education part of your CV can be shrunk to a footnote. If you have recently graduated from college, your education part should be longer and more in-depth than your work experience section. The knowledge and abilities acquired in the classroom are genuine and applicable in the working world. Recent grades can bolster their application by detailing relevant courses taken, clubs or groups they've participated in, and other activities they've participated in. Oh, and don't forget to put in any awards or accolades that you may have won. Nobody hates a winner, now. Do they? One last thing, do a proper grammar check on your CV as no recruiter is going to hire someone who can even write sentences properly. Finally, just optimize your CV according to the job you are looking for and you will be good to go. So, that is all the time we had today. If you want to learn more about the required skills to get your dream job, then do subscribe to our channel. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notification about our newest videos. See you all next time.